Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. This is War, Peace, and the Presidency. We are breaking with convention. I'm Amy Goodman. Thousands of delegates and elected officials have descended on Chicago as the Democratic National Convention kicks off today. The four-day convention comes one month after President Biden ended his bid for re-election. Vice President Kamala Harris secured the Democratic presidential nomination in a virtual roll call earlier this month and is expected to again formally accept the party's nomination when she addresses the convention on Thursday night. Dozens of delegates with the uncommitted movement are also in Chicago as they continue to pressure Harris to halt U.S. military support for Israel's war on Gaza. The delegates represent states where some 700,000 people cast uncommitted votes during primaries to protest Democrats' pro-Israel policies. For the first time ever, the DNC is hosting a panel on Palestinian human rights. The uncommitted delegation welcomed the move, but they're also continuing to request that Dr. Tanya Hajj-Hassan, who's volunteered in Gaza, be permitted to address the convention from the stage. On Sunday, hundreds of protesters took to the streets of Chicago, saying they'll disrupt the DNC until Democrats listen to their demands. This is Kshama Savant, co-founder of Workers Strike Back and former Socialist Seattle City Council member. The possibility of Trump 2.0 is only a reality because of the many betrayals by the Biden-Harris administration. Biden and Harris, both as president and as vice president, and the Democratic Party as a whole, they broke their promise for a $15 an hour minimum wage. They blocked the railroad worker strike, which is possibly the one of the most anti-worker, anti-union actions that can be taken by politicians. And so, in other words, both the Democratic and Republican parties are anti-worker, and they are both pro-war. Meanwhile, Chicago's Democratic Mayor Brandon Johnson in a recent interview called Israel's war a genocide, saying, quote, what's happening right now is not only egregious, it is genocidal. We have to acknowledge and name it for what it is and have the moral courage to exercise our authority, the Chicago mayor said. We'll have more from the DNC after headlines. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's in Israel where the he warned ongoing ceasefire talks may be the last chance to free Hamas hostages as he spoke from Tel Aviv earlier today. Blinken added, quote, it's also time to make sure that no one takes any steps that could derail this process, unquote. Inside Gaza, displaced Palestinians and Khan Yunus responded to Blinken's latest visit. Today in the Gaza Strip, we are suffering from the Americans and international community ganging up on us, without mercy on us. As I said, this visit is as usual to check on Israel and provide it with arms and logistic matters to continue the war of extermination on the Gaza Strip. There will be no changes. We are very pessimistic about this visit. Israel's slaughter continues throughout the Gaza Strip. The Israeli military is pushing further into central Deir al-Bala as Gazans are now being crowded into just 10 percent of the besieged territory. On Saturday, an Israeli airstrike in Deir al-Bala killed at least 18 members of the same family, including 11 siblings aged between 2 years old and 22. On Sunday, another attack in the same region killed more Palestinian children. Mohammed Awad Khattab said six of his grandchildren were killed as they slept along with their mother, his daughter, who worked for the United Nations. My daughter had been struggling to have children for years. She had them through IVF. Four of the children were quadruplets. The eldest son and the youngest daughter, who was only a year and a half old, were also killed. What wrong did these innocent children do? Were they posing any danger to Israel? Were they carrying arms? UNRWA, the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, is marking World Humanitarian Day today by honoring its 207 staff members who've been killed by Israel since October 7th. U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres is calling for a polio pause to conduct an urgent vaccination campaign inside Gaza after health authorities confirmed a 10-month-old infant had contracted the highly contagious disease. Let's be clear. 
the ultimate vaccine for polio is peace and an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. But in any case, a polio pause is a must. It is impossible to conduct a polio vaccination campaign with war raging all over. The 10-month-old baby is Gaza's first known case of polio in a quarter of a century. In Israel, relatives of hostages held in Gaza rallied in Tel Aviv this weekend ahead of Tony Blinken's visit. This is Lee Siegel, whose brother is one of the remaining hostages. We are broken. We are sad. We are tired. We wake up in the morning thinking about the hostages. Maybe this will be the day when they come home. We go to sleep every night thinking tomorrow morning we will wake up to a better day. This morning was not a better day. True, negotiations are ongoing. Until the hostages are home, negotiations mean nothing. Meanwhile, Hamas and the Islamic Jihad say they're responsible for an explosion in a truck in Tel Aviv Sunday evening. The blast killed one person believed to be the detonator of the explosive, the suicide bomber. Regional tensions remain high amidst ongoing attacks around the Israel-Lebanon border. Lebanese state media reported an Israeli strike in the south of the country killed at least 10 Syrian nationals Saturday, including two children. This is a witness of the attack. <laughs> Honestly, a number of workers were martyred on the site, including the janitor, along with his wife and two children. With them were a number of workers who also lived in the same building. They are all Syrians. This is a civil establishment that works in metal trades for hangars, false ceilings and homes, and has nothing to do with military things at all. Meanwhile, Israeli forces earlier today raided the town of Hula in southern Lebanon, according to local reports. In Sudan, a cholera outbreak has killed over 300 people, according to the World Health Organization. The highly contagious infection transmitted through contaminated food or water can cause severe diarrhea and dehydration. Sudan is facing catastrophic humanitarian situation, with famine declared in a camp in North Darfur and over 10 million displaced since the civil war erupted last April. This is Lenny Kensley of the World Food Program. It is the world's largest hunger crisis. Uh, 25.6 million people are in acute hunger, are facing acute hunger. Uh, that's 54% of the population. So basically that means one in two Sudanese is not able to put a basic meal on their plate every day, are struggling every day um, just to eat. Uh, of those, around 755,000 people are in the highest stage of food insecurity, catastrophic hunger, uh, which basically means they've run out of all options um, and, and are surviving in whatever way they can, eating leaves um, off trees, uh, eating grass. The Sudanese government is sending a delegation to Cairo for talks with U.S. and Egyptian officials after failing to attend peace talks in Geneva last week. The talks in Egypt will reportedly be restricted to discussing the implementation of last year's Jeddah agreement, which is supposed to uphold humanitarian protections during the bloody conflict. Back in the United States, Kamala Harris unveiled her economic policy agenda during a campaign speech in Raleigh, North Carolina, Friday. As president, I will be laser focused on creating opportunities for the middle class that advance their economic security, stability, and dignity. Together, we will build what I call an opportunity economy. Harris's plan includes bringing down the cost of housing, child care, and health care. The Democratic nominee said she'll restore and expand child tax credits, cancel medical debt, cap the cost of drugs, ban price gouging on groceries, and go after predatory corporate landlords, among other things. In other election news, Green Party presidential candidate Dr. Jill Stein announced historian and professor Butch Ware as her running mate. Jill Stein, who also ran on the Green Party ticket in 2012 and 16, has made a Gaza ceasefire, one of the main pillars of her platform. 
In a post announcing her VP pick, Stein wrote, quote, This is truly a historic ticket, bringing together a Jewish woman and a black Muslim man against genocide, endless war, climate collapse, and rampant injustice, and for an economy that works for working people, a livable future for our children, and an America and a world that works for all of us, she said. Stein and Butch Ware held a virtual press conference Saturday. APAC and the arms manufacturers have bought and paid for um, both of these parties. So, of course, they cannot um, agree to an arms embargo because those checks have already been cashed, right? They, they have their projections of all of the future income off of the endless future war. And in health news, Philippines is the latest country to report a new case of MPOX. Authorities say the 33-year-old Filipino patient came from Manila, had no history of foreign travel. Last week, the World Health Organization declared MPOX a global public health emergency after an outbreak spread from the Democratic Republic of Congo to a dozen neighboring countries. Sweden and Pakistan have since reported cases as well. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, war, peace, and the presidency, we're breaking with convention.